What is up guys? I just wanted to let you guys know the streaming situation since I kind of just stopped streaming on YouTube and a lot of people think I just stopped streaming altogether. But we are currently still streaming every single day, almost every single day, at 1 p.m. EST on kick.com slash tempest. So if you guys want to watch me live, 1 p.m. EST kick.com slash tempest. Other than that, that's it, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. What is up guys? Today we are bringing you a special kind of video. We've never done something like this, but we are doing the ultimate yom guide for season 13 from skullcapped and we're doing a review on it someone linked me a video of this and told me to do a review on it so yeah let's uh see how it goes also if my mic sounds weird i'm still um at a different place so yeah hopefully it's not too bad you can play in League of Legends. With a ton of mobility options and crazy damage, almost every single game is montage worthy if you know what you're doing. Sadly, True. this is what keeps so many players from trying to learn him. So many people think it takes a ton of skill and mechanics to pull off playing Yone. Don't worry, you don't need crazy mechanics to instantly do well in this champion. In this Agreed. Guy, this champ is very... A lot of people think this champ is like super hard. Well, not really. I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like everyone calls this champ brain... Like, he's, he's actually harder than people think he is. Things are reverse, honestly. Playing Yone immediately from his playstyle, combos, tips and tricks, laning guidelines, and oh, yeah, I've not watched this video, so we're going in blind. Everything else you need to improve at League of Legends, head on over to skillcap.com. Our service is yeah, yeah, we don't want yeah, whatever. Yone can do. We're sure most of you coming into this guide already have a general idea of what Yone can do. He's a DPS monster who can dish out a ton of consistent damage. Not even dedicated tanks can stand up to the amount of power True. Yone has. Most tanks are really bad in Yone. Once he hits his Infinity Edge power spike, he begins to burst harder than even champions like LeBlanc. Not only that, but one of his biggest mm, yeah. characteristics is that he's able to do that absurd damage all while having a safety net with his E. You can just leave it in a safe area, go in, kill someone, and easily get back out. Honestly, Yone's kit isn't that complex and is fairly easy to pick up. Agreed. E, whack some people with autos and cues, and get out if you need to. The difference that is all you need to do to get to gold playing this champ, or at least silver. Literally, just use your E, go in with our Q, whack some people, so boom. Amazing Yone players and new ones is that they know all the tricks to making that way more consistent and reliable. Yep. So let's break down some of the ways to make that happen, starting with his combos. Yone has a few important combos you definitely need to know. Let's start with the most basic one, Q Flash. All you're doing is pressing Q before you press your flash. This makes it come out faster than if you had done flash and then Q. You do this anytime you're flashing in to hit someone. Yep, I mean, there's no point in not doing this. Alternative. There's also W Flash, which is good for similar reasons. Now, let's get into the really important ones. Yone's Q3 has two different flash combo variations you need to know. The first one is similar to the previous combo. You just flash before you press Q3, and it'll make you flash forward and extend the yep, range. Yep, pretty basic. It's the same concept as what we talked about before. It's faster than if you press flash first, and is likely to catch your opponents off guard. For the second variation, you need to know that when Yone uses Q3, he doesn't just knock up the players in his gust of wind, but also anything around him. So what you can do is flash on top of someone as you use q mm -hmm. And it'll knock them up. This is very good to basically do. EQ flash on Yasuo just without E. To react to, like Zed, for example. If Yone Q threes, it gives Zed time to either W or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really important. So I do this a lot, honestly, to get uh, lane kills. Zed off guard for an easy kill. The final combo you need to learn. Also, someone mentioned that it's two hitboxes. So not only is his body hitbox, but it's um his tornado too. So if you throw out the Q and then flash, the NATO still goes. So it's like you have two hitboxes, so you could hit someone to the left of you, and if you flash to the right, you're going to hit both of them. Three into ult. Yoni's ultimate is a pretty overpowered ability, but can sometimes be a bit difficult to land on targets who are moving freely. So what you can do is get your Q3 ready. If you land it, it'll guarantee that your mm -hmm. ult lands on your target. Again, basic. Just how his Here's kit is made. So. example of it being used properly. Yone wants to kill Lissandra, but her ultimate is a pretty strong defensive ability that counters his engage. So he uses Q3 Flash to catch her off guard. And then he uses that to chain CC his ultimate, which allows him to kill her before she ever touched the ground and had a chance to react. One final note about this combo is that it does give your opponent a chance to flash if you do it right on top of them. So if you Q3 while next to them, they'll drop down before your ultimate animation ends. Wait, did he literally mess up that combo? So if you what? One final note about this combo is that it does give your opponent a chance to flash if you do it right on top of them. So if you Q3 they literally while messed up the combo in the video. <laughs> like what? Is that it does give your opponent a chance to Look. flash if you do it right on top of them. So if you Q3 while next to them, they'll drop down. Yeah, not even do that correctly, but whatever. Giving them a chance to flash. However, it is a guaranteed combo if you land your Q3 from further away, since they'll still be airborne by the time your ult goes off. All right, those are the only. I think you're still able to flash that, by the way. Now let's cover all the tips and tricks that will help you find way more success in your games. 
For starters, the first thing we need to address is the biggest mistake we see from every new Yone player. Ooh. If you're going for a long all-in, you should almost never start with your E. The yep. problem with it is that you're now on a set timer to get the kill. If you don't get it in those five seconds, you're going to snap back and let your target walk away for free. Like here. So like right there, yeah, but that is spot on. That is like something I almost have to tell everyone that I coach. The biggest thing, like every single time they go for like an all-in or like chasing someone, they would just E early, then they just like dash away and they E all the way back. Definitely the biggest mistake that I see new Yone players do. Many Yones would be tempted to immediately E forward, but this Yone knows that the Swain can maybe stall things out for five seconds with his ultimate. So instead of using E, yeah, this is very important. He goes in with R. This way, you still have your E to chase if you need it, but you're not on a strict timer. Okay, but in that specific scenario, for five seconds with his ultimate. Um, definitely not the waste ult there. You just E. Yone goes in with R. This way, you still have your E to chase if you need it, but you're not on a strict timer to finish off your opponent. This goes along with an important mindset that your E is not a damage spell. It is a mobility spell. Could use a better scenario, but it is what it is. If you don't know, Yone's E will deal a percentage of the damage you dealt while it was up. Unfortunately, a lot of players tunnel vision on this extra damage, which causes them to miss a ton of free kills. Just keep this in mind. Yone already does more than enough damage, even without his E. If you don't need it to gap close, then don't immediately press it in every fight. Try to stick on your targets with Q3s and your ultimate. Yep, this way, you can exactly. Your e until when you actually need it, letting you guarantee. Yeah, like you only, unless it's a close fight. If it's not a close fight and they're running away, do not use your E unless it's your last case of like def, um, offense, right? Like if that's the last thing you can do to catch up to someone, then use the E. Way more kills. Okay, one more handy tip about your E. It is a really overpowered ability versus certain champions because it will remove certain CC effects when you snap. Yeah, like Zoe. This is especially important to know versus champions with sleeps like Zoe and Lily. Yep. <laughs> they land their sleep on you. Again, so going into the bond. Going into this video bond. This is why Yone is such a great counter into Zoe. All right, let's mm -hmm. cover a bunch more tips that will all help bring your Yone up a notch. Remember how we talked about how Yone's Q has a hitbox around him? This is very important to use when running away from enemy champions. If someone is on top of you, you can just dash backwards towards safety while also knocking them up to build even more distance. This comes up a lot, so make sure you utilize it, especially because the hitbox is so absurd. Even if someone is basically behind you, it'll clip them and knock them up. It's also important to keep this in mind as you farm. Niche situations will come up like this one a lot. Right now, Yone wants to farm the Krugs, but to do so, he'd have to Q forward. Instead, he uses the Q's generous hitbox to farm the camp and still move the way he actually wants to go. Speaking of the jungle in your Q, I mean, it is a small thing, but I guess that is important. In the jungle you want to keep in mind. For example, you can hop over walls with your E to build Q3 on a target, then you can actually dash past the wall permanently. Something else super important to keep in mind is that you can build your Q3 with jungle monsters that are out of vision, but that you know are still alive. The angles to hit camps from over a wall are pretty obvious in most cases. The thing that pretty basic things, I'm not gonna lie, but I mean, there's a guide after all. And Q Gotta cover the everything. It's been a few seconds. That may take some practice, but it's definitely worth learning. The one camp that isn't obvious how to hit is the Raptors from mid lane. To hit the Raptors from over the wall, stand. This is good to show the exact um, place to, to Q. hit. This will hit them and get you a stack. Then you can wait for them to loop around to get another Q stack. Obviously, this works on the other side. It's always good to do this level one, by the way. I don't do it honestly because I'm just lazy, but yeah, you should be doing this. Like, there's no point in not doing it level one. As a mid laner, using Raptors to stack your Q comes up constantly, so make sure you learn how to position properly for it, and you'll have way more options in how to approach fights. Another important tip for your Q is understanding how the damage actually works. You see, only Yone's initial target hit by his Q counts as an auto attack and triggers on hit effects like lifesteal. This Q right here is a mistake, because Yone won't lifesteal off the second minion hit. You see him purposefully begin auto attacking every minion individually to maximize his healing afterwards though. Alright, let's cover some final tips about your <clears throat> And same with Bork, so if you like, if you Q and there's a minion first, um, the Bork damage won't go off. That's why when you go Bork, it's a more of a slow push thing and does not do good in AoE damage. Towards the last person hit, clumping everyone up. Yeah, so like right there if you ult, and you had Bork, you Q through all of them, your Bork damage is only gonna do damage to the first one. So what do you say about that? All right, 
let's cover some final tips about your ultimate. Keep in mind that your ult drags everyone who is in the hitbox towards the last person hit, clumping everyone up. An important tip to keep in mind with this is that your W's shield scales based on the amount of enemies hit by it. This means that you almost always want to cast W immediately after landing. Mm -hmm. That's a basic team fight combo. Whenever you land third Q on someone, you immediately ult because obviously the person that you just hit can't do anything, and if the person flashes out that you're trying to hit for secondary, at least you still hit the first person. So makes it very um, consistent. That's why I hate when I see people just like E ult someone, and if they flash it, nice, you just waste your ult and your E. It's like, oh, well, really bad. Feels really bad. Give you a bigger shield and allow you to keep DPSing freely. In regards to another ult trick, something we need to cover is that your E's snapback can technically be delayed by two different ways. W and ult. is something your opponents can do. Even if your E's duration ends, if your opponent has crowd controlled you, you oh, no. not <laughs> until the effect is over. The second way is one that you can do reliably. Your E will not snap back if you're in the middle of an animation. Most Yones will abuse this by using their ultimate at the yep, end. You can do the same thing with W too early on, because W early animation is actually pretty long without any attack speed. Super long animation. This is very important when you're trying to min-max damage. Your ultimate has such a long animation that you'll burn through a lot of your E's duration if you can't- Yeah, I've seen people like try to use their ult like in the middle of the anim uh, middle of the E or like when they're going for an all-in, it just it just makes you like tilt. Cause I'm just like, getting that ult, you could literally get like two to three autos plus a Q. So you're losing so much damage. That's why you always want to use it at the end if you're going for an all-in. So if you want to get every ounce of damage possible, yep. you should delay using your ultimate until the last moment right before your E runs out. The damage difference here speaks for itself. Yone players will always do this during kills where every bit of damage matters, so make sure you Same thing with w. when you're not sure if you'll have enough damage to finish someone off. With all those tips in mind, let's cover the most important laning concepts that will immediately help you own every game. Okay, that should be interesting. The first one is super important in melee matchups. Remember how we talked about how Yone's Q works? Only the first target hit counts as an auto attack. What this means is that in lane, if you Q through a minion, the enemy wave will not target you since you technically hit your opponent with an AoE ability. This is very nice in melee matchups. When you want to pressure yep. your opponent... Trying That's actually a really advanced thing. I'm surprised they even cover that. ...go for last hits. Cue them through the wave and take no minion damage in return. Now, in every matchup, Yone almost always wants to be able to go for extended trades. You have a lot of DPS with your Q and lethal tempo, which means that you generally want to keep the wave on your side of the lane. Not only that, but before most trades, you generally want to stack up your Q3 so that you can both extend your engage range while at the same time giving you some CC to begin your trade. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna say this now before, maybe they, after this they're about to say it, but that's not the best tip, but like, that is very matchup specific. So like, some matchups you want to get your third Q and then E in, but not every, like, in range lanes, yes, but not even in every range lane. Like, let's say you're against Ari, terrible, you never want to do that, because then it just, like, locks you in animation, and then she's always gonna land the E. Same thing against, like, Zed, if you go in with your third Q, you third Q him, he always Ws away, lands E, Q on you. You know, so it's really matchup specific. Sometimes doing that is just terrible. But let's see if they uh, say it right now. These are kind of counterintuitive tips, though. If you want to get your Q3 ready, won't you constantly push the wave if you're queuing it? To I guess not. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's not... I don't agree with that tip. It's very matchup specific. You want to be very careful and only hit a single minion each time you use your Q. Yes, it's an AoE ability, but you can angle it to where you're only hitting one minion. Another matchup, like Fiora. If you E third Q into Fiora, guess what? She presses W, you die. You know? Can't really just say that's a generic tip. do this all the time, so make sure you don't forget when trying to win the lane phase. All right, let's wrap things up with a quick build to get you going. What's nice about Yone is that depending on the patch, he can have some very versatile itemization options. Sadly for us, this means that we can't share these because items like Blade of the Ruined King get patched every other week. So by the time you see this, it'll probably already be dated. So we're recommending the most consistent build that will be good no matter what patch you're playing. You rush Berserker Greaves, then go Shield Bow into Infinity Edge. No matter what patch you're playing or what enemy champions you're up against, this <coughs> build will Fair. always be good. Then you yep, round it out with some other bruiser or tank items, depending on what you feel like you'll need in that game. For your runes, you definitely want to see all those items. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with all those, except for Lord Doms. I don't think Lord Doms is like ever good on Yone. If anything, you're gonna if you really need armor pen, then I would say Black Leaver's better. I don't really like Lord Doms ever. I think it's bad. Bruiser or tank items, depending on what you feel like you'll need in that game. For your runes, you definitely want to run Lethal Tempo, as it synergizes very heavily with Yone's Q. You want Resolve as your secondary runes, and Yone has a lot of versatility in what he can run there. Run what you prefer, or what you think will be best in your matchup every game. Alright, and that's everything. 
Damn, they really don't go in depth at all about this. Like, they don't even be like, okay, in poke wind, second wind, in melee lands like Zed, etc., you go bone plating. They're just like, take whatever you want. Run there. Run what you prefer or what you think will be best in your matchup. Oh, they are not very <laughs> and that's everything you need interesting. To, know to start dominating with Yone. For everything else, there's skillcap.com. It's the fastest way to climb and get the rank you've always wanted. We take the highest priority skills you need to learn to climb ranks fast, such as weight. Yeah, yeah, we skip this part. So while you that's not all though, all this seemed too good to be true. Okay, so well that was it. Um, I mean honestly the ultimate I mean obviously it's clickbait, whatever, but looking at this guide very, very, very basic, doesn't really tell you much of anything, doesn't really help you in any matchups, and like they're going over like flash combos instead of like just like landing combos or like the well i mean they say it later on the video where you like you get third q then e in but again that's not even like very specific it, it's smash up dependent so just saying that and, we, and then like let's say you go into a game against zed a good zed then you try to do that combo then you just matches with w and then you just just get shit on because you're like wait doing this combo in a zed is terrible you know so i mean and then it just gives you a generic build shilbo ie but i mean it doesn't go in depth about anything at all. So, I mean, I would give this guide like a 6 out of 10. It doesn't really give you much of anything. And like all the, the thing that it gives you is like very generic. But I mean, it's just a basic guide, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. It, it is, it's good for just the basics, I guess. But for anyone who's like trying to learn Yon and like trying to get useful t tips on like matchups and everything, it's definitely not the way to go. But yeah, let me know if you guys enjoyed this video, and just saying, we are coming out with our own Yone guide later this month. By the end of this month, it will be out. Same with Yasuo, so be on the lookout for that. But yeah, let me know how you guys feel about this guide in the comments. And yeah, that was it. Let me know what else you want me to react to in the future. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.